Let's get dirty. Let's design a cooling system. Today, we are going to take this cooling pump, we're going to install it, we're going to fabricate this cooling reservoir from an X5, it's a 4.4 liter E53 M62 engine. It conveniently sits right in here, sit it right on there, and this thing is going to look amazing. We're gonna take this cover, we're gonna modify it just a little bit more and fit it in. We're gonna get a bracket installed here to these two bolts here. It's gonna be awesome. And we're gonna start working on the plumbing as well, including the radiator, uh, high and low uh, pressure radiator lines. We're gonna get the cooling pump installed to get all the heater core routing. This is gonna be a great episode, guys. You don't wanna miss this one. I'm telling you, we got a lot going on on this one, huh? Alright fellas, this is the coolant reservoir from the E53 M62 version. It's got, on the bottom, it's got a, a level sensor which we're going to hook up. It's got um, an outlet here from the reservoir out to the coolant pump and it, we're going to tee into that. Um, <clears throat> it's got our bleeder which is perfect. And then we've got two inlets here which are basically backflows from um, this was a, remember, this was for a V8. So one went to one cylinder bank, one went to the other. One of the cylinder banks happened to have the bleeder attached to it. The other one just goes right into the reservoir. However, we're going to end up blocking this one off. We don't need it. This guy is going to end up going straight to the radiator and that should take care of this coolant reservoir. Now let's take a look at the installation. The installation is going to sit just like this and it's going to be perfect. The width of this guy fits perfect in between the power steering reservoir and the alternator. And it's gonna sit just like that. So we're gonna end up having to snake this guy around to the radiator. We're gonna cut this guy off and block it. And the bottom is gonna end up going to the heater core and the coolant pump. So we need to modify our piece here so that it fits nicely, that it doesn't interfere with the outlet of the coolant uh, to the radiator and that we can get access and close the top. So let's see what we can do. This is the position that, we're, that I wanted it, right here. It's basically a little higher, just like this. This is exactly how I want it. So the mounting locations for it is gonna be, these two holes are gonna to mount to these two holes. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a bracket that goes from here to here, and then we're gonna be done. That's it, very, very easy for mounting. Here I uh, welded the nuts onto the bracket uh, in the exact location that I need in order to get the coolant reservoir to mount. Obviously, these are going to be a little bit too long, and I need to I need to shave them down just a little bit. Um, but this is pretty easy to install. That I will tell you that my welding job for squareness kind of sucked, huh? Wow, that was pretty bad. But that's why I put these in here to make sure that they are straight and true to each other. And all I got to do now is just kind of bend them in place in order to get them where I want. So not really concerned about that. So I do have my two holes here for the uh, mounting on the alternator. I have my two nuts there for welding nuts. I <laughs> got my nuts there. Look at my nuts. So I got my two nuts here for welding the cool uh, to for uh, installing the coolant reservoir. I got the coolant reservoir in place. Now I need to just kind of beautify this bracket a little bit. I gotta get some structural rigidity uh, to this L bracket here, clean it up, and it should be in good spot to uh, install and we can move on.
trying to fit this puppy over. After cutting this, affords me a little bit more room in the back, but there still is some interference right in this area where the outlet needs to go. Um, so I'm just gonna try to cut this around to see if I can try getting just enough of really there's gonna be nothing here except there's gonna be the mounting point here but there's gonna be nothing here to allow that um, that coolant hose to get on and wrap around so it can go into the radiator but right now everything is this is really butch it's really strong so I'm really <laughs> excited about it yeah <laughs> Now let's try to plug up this hole here that I cut and see if I can put an Oetker clamp on that. Ah, come on. I think I can do it. I think it's going to work. There we go. The right size. Nope. Too big. Perfect. Now let's put the cover on. You're not really going to be removing and installing this cover all that often, so it is important to get it on right, but it is a tight fit, that's for sure. Okay, all right, trim off all these edges, let's put the top on. That, huh? My airbox is on. Got a little stainless steel here for bling. Now let's focus on hoses. We got four main hoses we got to deal with. One coming from the thermostat up to the engine. The second coming from the output of the thermostat over to the heater core. The third being the lower radiator hose to the radiator. And the fourth being this hose, upper radiator hose, going to the radiator as well, but also branching out to the heater core. Now that other lo lower radiator hose that I was telling you about, not the lower radiator hose, but the lower uh, thermostat hose, actually branches off and goes into the outlet of the coolant reservoir. So it's a T that's gonna end up happening underneath here, and it's gonna go, be going straight here to the heater core so that the car actually gets heat. So let's focus on one hose at a time and see how we can route those two heater core hoses uh, over to the underneath, right? Well, actually just the one, just this guy. upper hose here came from the outlet of the thermostat and it goes up and it goes in here. I've decided not to modify this even though it has bends in place in order to avoid things like the air inlet to the turbos um, but I'm actually not going to be using that air inlet for the turbos. I'm going to go a whole different route but regardless there is provisions here for it and it's actually quite spacey and kind of loose so I'm going to put a couple of p-clamps in there to hold it in here, hold it in over here so it's actually gonna be held pretty well. It's got an Oetker clamp here that goes right into the uh, the cylinder head. So I don't wanna mess with that even though I know that I could. I really would rather just leave it as is and just clamp it down, okay? The other end is this heater hose here which I've conveniently modified this uh, quick connect on the output of the thermostat and turned it upside down. So instead of it going up, like it normally does on the M54s, it actually is turned down. I put a hose down here, right? A couple of clamps here, go to a plastic hose, which then goes to a three quarter inch hose. 
That, this is all going to be held in place and clamped, but it's going to end up going straight up where it will then be teed under here. There'll be a T here, a three-quarter, three-quarter, three-quarter T, and that'll go into the bottom part of this coolant reservoir, and this will go right to the bottom of the uh, heater core. That's going to take care of that hose. The upper one I haven't done yet, and the reason is is because that upper one comes up and around. It's going to go around here, and it's going to go into this bottom part of the upper radiator hose. As you can see here, if the radiator was installed, which I will do soon, this is not going to work. It's not good. So we got to figure out how to modify this upper radiator hose next in order to make it fit, not only on the actual upper radiator, upper radiator itself, but also this guy, which will not be uh, included here because it's already on the radiator, will then snake around and go to the top of the coolant reservoir. So I need to get a couple of parts from the store. I'm going to do that another time. I'm not going to uh, inundate you with the details of how to put a three-way T in at the bottom and connect it to the bottom of the reservoir, but that's how you do it. It's going to be tight in there, but it should work. So as you noticed, I added a T at the upper heater hose. Why did I do that? And that's because if you look at the way this is routed, it looks like it comes, it's down and then it comes up and then it goes back down. That's an opportunity for air to get trapped in the system and that is not good because that's called an air pocket or air locked, meaning that coolant cannot flow if there's air in there. Even though it's compressible, it's gonna compress and all that, but it's not gonna provide you the flow that you need. Now, yes, this is a self, this is a self bleeding coolant system. Understand, right? There's a bleeder right here on the coolant reservoir. However, if there's a high point in your custom coolant system, you need to add a bleeder there as necessary. Here, I think that it's necessary to add one in the upper heater hose. So while they make 40 or $50 three quarter inch bleeder hose T assemblies, I'm actually gonna try to make my own. So I might do that in this episode and I might do it in another episode, we'll see. But as, is, as it is right now, I'm gonna leave this alone for mocking up purposes and for prototyping purposes only. Now. We have this hose going from here. It's going to go snake down and it's going to come back up to this location here on the uh, upper radiator hose. So we're going to modify this. We're going to use a T, get this thing in, and we should be up. We should uh, be completed with that. Now let's get the radiator in. What's wrong with this picture? Well, just about everything. This hose is no good. We cannot use it. This tube here coming out of the triple connector on the upper radiator hose is redundant to this guy coming out of the radiator itself, so we will not be using this. What we're going to do, we're gonna keep the quick connect, connect on the cylinder head, we're gonna cut the tubing, we're gonna make a custom piece of tubing. Let me show you that really quick. This here is a custom aluminum T. I did not make this. These are amazing welds. I do not have that capability. However, this guy is gonna end up going in there like that. It's gonna T out of the radiator. It's gonna go into the cylinder head, and this guy is a three quarter inch tube and that is going to connect to the previously aforementioned three quarter inch heater hose. It's gonna fit right in there. And that should take care of heater hoses and upper radiator hose. So let's take a look at that. All right, I bought a couple of uh, custom bent tubes from uh, you know AutoZone. I've also got a lot of leftover parts from prototyping in the past. I've got some smaller tubes here as well. And I've got even smaller tubes like fuel hoses and uh, vacuum lines as well. I don't need this and it doesn't look like I'm gonna need this, but I can sift through these and figure out where I can get some really large, radi a large radius tubing with tight bends. I think that this one is a good candidate here. It's got another bend here. Might be good for a 45. I've got one here. This is a really tight bend I can cut out. This one here is a good one. And uh, this one here, I can probably extract a couple of these hose clamps from this one and use it uh, in the application. So uh, I got a couple good ones here. So let's, uh, let's see what I can do. I ended up needing to cut this <clears throat> tube off of this quick connect, which is fine. So the idea is that you go from here to here, right? So here's my mode of thinking when I'm doing this, right? I got my, my tube here. 
one and a half inch T by three quarter inch output for the heater. And I got everything in position, so basically something like that. All I need to do now is connect the dots. Go from here to here, and then from here to here. So I need four hose clamps, which is gonna be, yeah, it's a lot of hose clamps, but it's a custom tube and it should work just fine if I can use the right kind of tube. And I think I should be able to find it in this whole sea of one and a half inch tubes that I've got. I've got 45s, I've got 135s, I've got 90s, I've got just about anything I need in order to make this right. So we'll do a fit, quick time lapse and I'll show you exactly how we do it on this and then we'll work on, work on this puppy too. Okay, well, this is mostly complete. You can see everything's pretty tight. These are still sharp corners from when I cut them uh, earlier. So these are pretty sharp, so we have to round that out. <clears throat> we need to hold this down for the clamp. And, <clears throat> you know, this is basically where it's gonna end up living. So this is pretty nice. Uh, I think it's a pretty slick setup. We gotta basically cover this up and, and secure it down, that's easy. We got our upper radiator hose here, we got our lower one there, it will be getting teed down there to this guy. And um, now let's do the upper uh, coolant hose from the radiator to the coolant. <laughs> So I took the intake uh, air filter kit off. I was able to acquire a right angle quick connect to barb fitting. In fact, it wasn't just a quick connect to barb fitting, it was actually part of an entire hose. This assembly here that I ended up scavenging from an X5, I bought it on, on eBay. It works out pretty good. There's a couple of, uh, there's a straight one here and there's also the 90 degree that I took from this location. I'm not gonna really use that, but I do have it here and I have it hooked up. I had to shave the intake manifold just a little bit in order to clear it, and now it clears. So the idea is that this tube, this the, <clears throat> the radiator tube is gonna end up curling around inside of the intake, and it's gonna go right in to here. But this size, which is 3 8 won't fit over that, which is more like half inch. So I have a coupler here, uh, just like this with a couple of Oedeker clamps, and I'm going to clamp them up and get it installed. So let's do that real quick. Now we're gonna talk about the lower radiator hose, which in my opinion is going to be the hardest. Why? Number one, it's the tightest. I can't remove the radiator in order to uh, install it. I need the radiator there in order to fix things, to, to, to tighten things and, and size them. Second, is that there are the tightest radius bends uh, on this, in this application here. Uh, I have the existing lower radiator hose that I've, that I've gotten from the, the donor car, but, <clears throat> But there's still a lot that it, need, that it needs to clear. And uh, there's a lot of good bends here, but I'm only using the quick connect on the thermostat output. I'm not using it on the radiator. The radiator is just gonna be a regular barb connection. So I'm gonna need to cut this off for sure, but how much of it do I wanna salvage? Well, let's see. So as it turns out, I do need to remove the radiator, but I marked it on the chassis of the car so I know kind of the location of where it is. And because it's hoses, everything is very forgivable. So let's remove the radiator. And I wanna show you how to use a pretty cool tool in order to make your own custom tubing. Got this from Jegs and it's actually a pretty neat tool and it's very, very versatile for anybody looking to do custom coolant tubing.
So after installing the lower radiator hose with the quick connect in its position and its clocked orientation, I have I am now constrained to cutting this tube at a location that makes it conducive to put a single um, additional uh, uh, butt, butt fitting or nipple in there to allow me to hit this location. Probably like right around here is what it's gonna end up looking like. But I need to figure out how to get this, oops, how to get the connection at this lower radiator hose to fit the barb on that side. So I wanna basically cut this off to make things a little bit easier for me first, and then uh, and then I'll, I'll get it set up. Let's, let's at least cut this off because I don't need it here. Anyways, in a way that allows me to get another hose right there. So I'm gonna need... And I think I got it figured out. That right there is the location of the lower radiator hose. This guy is a, I don't know, 135 degree cut. This guy has been cut down to length. This guy's gonna end up going basically right like that. And you can see very clearly that all I need is something to replicate there with that tube into here. Um, I Like I said, I already have a <clears throat> something, I just got this, I guess I had it in stock or something, but I don't want to use copper, so I want to make this out of aluminum. So let's make it out of aluminum. So this here is your JEGS tubing bender. The way that it works is the bottom part does the tubing bending, it creates the bead, not the bending, but a bead, and the upper end is the female uh, mirror image of that so that the bead can be made with the room to expand the, tu the tube and the metal. This bottom piece here actually sits into any vise or clamp, and I'll show you how to do that. This guy here is your uh, crank. It's uh, There's a crank handle right there, and the handle goes on, and it cranks. And when you do the cranking, there's a gear mechanism inside of there that spins both of the large and the small diameter at the same time. And this, and this screw on the top actually brings the larger diameter tube, the female, up and down as you put pressure on it. You want to start off with low pressure and then as you continue to make your revolutions, you want to use higher and higher pressure until you get the bead quality that you like because you can do different various depths of bead. So the two beads that I made, what I, what I realized is that you need to have a certain distance before you start creating a radius of a turn of any tube because the, a larger diameter disc, the female version, is not going to be able to uh, accommodate for that twist in the bend. So you need to have a certain distance before you actually have your radius so that it's a straight tube that it's actually uh, bending, uh, uh, um, beading. So <clears throat> not ideal. Not bad, actually. I like, I mean, the quality of these beads are good for a straight tube. All right, guys, that just about does it for me here on the E30 M54 coolant routing. The only thing we have to do still is incorporate the T that is underneath the coolant reservoir. It goes to the heater core as well. We don't have the accessibility to do that at the moment, but we will do it after we take the engine out. It'll be in another subsequent video. Because the coolant reservoir is installed on, on the engine, it actually is the same reference point, so making the tube will be a lot easier, especially when the engine is out. My name is Frank Macalusa from Garageaholic. That just about does it for me today, guys. Comment, like, subscribe if you haven't. Please consider subscribing. I would love to hear your comments and everything about what I'm doing here. This thing is going to be done in just a few short months by the spring for my customer. AK to take this thing out on the road all summer and take it to shows. I think he's going to have a blast with it. This is going to be a great car. Thank you so much, guys, and great to talk to you. I am out of here. Later.